Welcome back to Tack and Track. I'm Brad. And I'm Gil. Today we're talking about the Ruger Mark IV pistol. Uh, this is a 22 caliber pistol that uh, I picked up to compete with Brad in some of the competitions that we go to. Um, so far he is still beating me with pistols, just barely, but this has helped me come a long way from what I was using, which was this excellent, excellent 1911 Colt Wather, Wather Colt 22. Um, loved this gun, but needed something a little more race bred. So I got the Mark IV and I gotta say I'm pleased. Uh, it's less than half the price of that one and performs nearly as well. Right, so this is the obvious choice when you're looking for a target 22 caliber pistol. I think this is the first thing that pops into everybody's head and just as common of a choice as the Ruger 1022s you see around us here. Now, the question is, is it worth the price difference between the Colt Walther that we've done a review on in the past and the Valcorks and Black Mamba? Because it pretty much falls right in between the two. Right, and that brings us into our value category. So MSRP on this is about 700 bucks. Um, you can pick them up cheaper than that. And there's a lot of different variations that you can get too that are more expensive, less expensive. Um, this one had a little bit longer barrel, which is what I wanted, was a, bit, a better sight picture um, than this one. I wanted a little more length out of those irons. Um, and that's, that's helped me a lot. It also uh, is ready for a Picatinny rail on the top. It does not come with it on there in certain models. Um, this one did. You also have the fiber optic sight on this one straight out of the box. No, I put that on there. Yeah. So it doesn't come with the rail or it, the fiber optic sight? Depends on what you get. So this one didn't come with the fiber optic sight, came with the rail. Uh, it wasn't installed, I put it on there, uh, but it did come in the case. Um, and this one was brand new, had never been fired. Um, How many mags did it come with? Came with two mags. Uh, for the competitions, we bought a few more. Um, and this is what the magazines look like. They do fit the exact same as those mags. You can swap uh, between the valve quartz and in this one because they've both got the 2245 right. grip module on them. Now the valve corkson does come with a different mag than these, but it's a different base plate, slightly different angle, different follower, but those will work in the valve corkson. We tested that out fairly recently. Yes, and these are cheaper, and there's a reason for that. The ones in the valve corkson have a nice big lip on that makes your mag changes a lot faster. Uh, this one fits fairly flush with the gun. Um, so there is, there is a trade-off there again with price, but these work just fine, and in a rimfire challenge, you probably won't need all 10 bullets unless uh, you're this guy. So mag changes aren't gonna happen, you know, during your competition very frequently. There you go. So it falls right between all three of these. The Colts 300 to 400 ish, um, about 700 here and about 1200 here, but it's got a lot of the features that we see on this. It's got a 1911 style grip angle, mm -hmm. um, it's got a longer barrel than what you typically see on a 22. It's ready for the rail up top, it doesn't come on it, but it's ready for it right. so we can go to optics. It's a pretty good in between option, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty thrilled with it. I didn't feel like spending the money to get that, although it is a higher quality firearm. Having shot that, I do love it, and I think it looks cool. That particular one's got a pretty paint job on it. Uh, but this is a great competition gun that's its not a collectible or anything, but it's a very good gun for what we use it for. Um, so I think- And it's reasonable to think of its price. At its price, I think it's a good value. Um, so out of five, where are you going to land on your value score? I'm going to give it three and a half. I think that's a, a fair score for that gun. Um, 22s just shouldn't be that expensive, but prices have gone up recently on everything. And that has also hit the gun market pretty extreme. I'll also say this. I feel like at its price point, it should have a better trigger. 
I do to the reset on it. Um, if I've been shooting that gun and I go to this one, I'm not getting my next round off because I forget that I gotta let my finger out that much further. Now you can, of course, upgrade these. Um, you can get a Valkortsen Accurizing Trigger Kit. Uh, they're like $110, but you know, you're gonna end up spending as much money on this to end up with that, but still not have that. Right. So I'll probably do it anyways, just cause I don't like the trigger that much. It needs better grips on it, for example. Uh, these grips, they're just kind of cheap plastic. Um, any 1911 grips will fit on it. Uh, I put some really fat ones on there, which made it hard to hit the mag release and Brad's little hands couldn't hold it. So I put these back on it cause he was supposed to use it in a competition the other day. And then he couldn't get it to fire. Um, Hi. So we both use the power cords in. Which brings us nicely into our ease of use category. Yeah. So ease of use is a category we talk about on all of our firearms. Um, my Val Corks and I have shot quite a good deal, mm -hmm. shot it in a lot of competitions, and its controls are almost identical to the Ruger. Um, after all, they share a lot of the same components. So ease of use. Magazine release, if you've ever used a 1911 or any other generic firearm, it's pretty intuitive. Yep, it's right there. Um, sights are pretty good. Sights are great. How was mounting that optic rail? Was that easy? Yeah, it was three, four screws, I think. Uh, there, are, <laughs> there are four holes for mounting because you can mount it in either direction. Ah. Uh, but you only end up using three of them to retain it. And they've stayed nice and tight with a little bit of Loctite on them. And um, another thing about this gun, it takes down just like that one does. So I'll just take in and push that in. Safety. Oh yeah, you gotta put the safety on. Put the safety on and then it comes apart very easily just like that. And you can remove it. And now you've got a two piece gun. Bolt pulls right out easily. Easy to clean. And that's really important because you need to clean your 22s more than some of your other firearms because 22 ammunition just inherently runs dirty um, and is problematic. Yeah. So I really think overall very easy to use, but we had a recent incident. Let's restart. Yeah, which I don't understand. I don't really understand this either but we shot we were going to swap guns we often do that when we do a review on them and i was going to shoot this in rim fire challenge and we had a safety not completely off issue and i'm going to show you guys the clips from that i'm not exactly sure what happened there because we or i was able to get a round off that not a round off and i believe that was due to the safety not being fully disengaged i was having some issues yeah uh which frustrated me uh, after the competition we went and we were going to play with it and see what was wrong with it put a mag in it dumped it no problems i was like what the heck you just you just didn't want to use my gun and lose so you had to use that one which is still one sure but um so all in all very easy to use i think this really deserves i think at least a 4.0 if not a 4.5 on Ease of use. Yeah, I'll give it a 4.0 because because of the trigger. Yeah. Um, that reset is pretty terrible. But take down and clean, easy as you can get take on down it. Take cleaning is super easy. There's so, no excuse not to. <laughs> right. I haven't, but there's no excuse not to. <laughs> Accuracy. Oh yeah, great. I really feel like it is an extremely accurate handgun. Is it quite as good as the Valkorxen? Well, maybe mechanically, but I feel like the trigger is not quite as good. And I don't feel like you're going to get quite as good of results. Yeah, um, it's very accurate, uh, and it's a little bit lighter than the Valkorsen, I think, um, which doesn't hurt you at all with 22. If anything, it helps you, and I haven't had any problems hitting targets with it. So. And with the rail up top, you can always put an optic like this Seymour on there. Mm -hmm which while it doesn't actually make the gun more accurate, it will make you more accurate with the gun. More accurate quickly. Right. Yeah. 
Um, so I think that's something that's really going for it. We've been griping about the trigger, but do remember we're comparing it to the Valkorkson. That's true. Overall, I think the trigger is good. It, it's certainly passable grade good. It's as good as the trigger in this one. Right. You know, it's not a bad trigger. It's just not great if you've been shooting with the right trigger. Um, so, all in all, I feel like the trigger is pretty good. I am disappointed that it didn't come with the front fiber optic sight from the factory. Yeah. Uh, I was too, but they're cheap. How much was it? $17. As a matter of fact, it almost looks exactly like the one on my Valkorkson. Yeah. Yeah, very similar uh, front sight there. So $17 upgrade, that's not bad. No, that's worth it too. Yep. Um, I would put different grips on it though, because those grips are terrible. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed in those for a handgun as expensive as it is. Mm -hmm. Any 1911 shooting 45, that same price point would have a much better grip on it. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think it's okay to cheap out just because it's a 22. But accuracy, what do you think? A 3.8 out of 5? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, like I said, I haven't run it with an optic yet. And having to replace that front sight to get a fiber optic on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 3.8 is fine. Stand by. Our next category is fun factor, and it's plenty of fun. Uh, when we go out to these competitions, we have a blast, uh, and this certainly doesn't hurt that. It's not the most exciting looking gun that I've ever seen. That probably is. Uh, and when you compare the two, it makes this one feel less fun, but it does look unique, that kind of cylindrical design. Um, when you're used to shooting a lot of square, you know, glocks and everything, this is a kind of a cool looking gun, but maybe not very special. Now, the one thing that is the elephant in the room on Fun Factor with actually all three of the guns on the table is the new 22s that are coming out um, from manufacturers like SIG that are high capacity mm -hmm. 22 um guns those are certainly interesting now i haven't had the opportunity to run any of those i've seen some of those starting to pop up but i haven't had the chance to get my hands on one of those and run one because that really is the limiting factor in how much fun these guns are is simply how much ammunition is in your magazine yep and these are 10 rounds per mag so perfect for competitions but it would be more fun to have some 20 or even 25 round mags i think it I think it could be done fairly easily, but right. it isn't. Well, that PMR-30 I've got with the 30-round magazine, that gun's a blast. Yeah. And each trigger's not nearly as good. You know, overall, it's not nearly as good a gun as these, but its capacity really kind of ups the fun factor there. Yeah. So what's your fun factor score, Gil? I'm going to give it a three. I think it's kind of right there in the middle. Um, it's a good gun for what we're using it for. Right. There's nothing terribly exciting about it outside of that. Right. I would agree with you there. Now, one one thing that would make this more fun, and you can get these with a threaded barrel. I should have, because uh, we've got a 22 suppressor on the way. And knowing that, I still bought one without a threaded barrel on it, and I regret doing that. But uh, I had been looking for something to compete with that one, so we thought this was a good choice. Should have gotten the threaded barrel, then it would be more fun. Right. Anytime you can add a suppressor, you're going to have more fun. Mm -hmm. and that brings us to reliability. Which is an interesting topic. We've only had that one hiccup, and I do think that was your thumb kind of hitting this because you sit a little bit higher in the handle. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it's been great. I haven't had any issues out of it. It's eaten all the ammunition I've fed it, and, yep. you know, in my. <laughs> In the box that I use in our competitions, it's got just a bunch of different stuff in there. Right. It's so just a it's... mixed box from from the dump bags. Um, and really, these have a absolutely fantastic reputation mm -hmm. for running incredibly reliably for many, many, many years, lots of rounds. And that's what makes it really good for these kind of competitions, because I know this is about Corkson, but it's the same basic design. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, you know, how many rounds do we put through one of these a month? 500 a piece? Yeah. You add that up, that adds up really fast to a lot of rounds downrange. And we were really looking for something very reliable. But we did have an issue out of this one. Yeah, and that uh, I've never had that issue. That was... It was just you. That was solely me. Um, and it was, it was kind of odd to have it. And it threw me for a little bit of a loop because I didn't expect it out of this gun. Mm -hmm. Because they have such a good reputation for running so well. And we've had great runs out of all the Ruger 1022s and all the other Ruger products we've ever run. My Ruger American kind of thing for years. Ruger as a brand is historically reliable. Yep, I'm a big fan. Um, so I'm going to give it a four and a half. You had an issue with it, but that I don't think was necessarily a fault of the guns. Maybe the design, which has been around for forever. I think that may have been figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, I think that may have been user induced mm -hmm. um, rather than gun induced, and that's the thing. Um, you know, that's just kind of one of those things that happens sometimes is a user induced error. And because it was my first time with the gun, I immediately blamed the gun rather than look in the mirror, which right. is easy to do. It is, but the gun didn't deserve it, so we're going to give it a four and a half. Um, and like we said, we, we use these two, three times a month in these competitions, so we get to use them a lot. So if we have reliability issues, we'll let you know. Uh, yeah. So far, he's been the only problem. <laughs> So overall thoughts, if you could do it all over again, knowing what you know now when you bought this, would you buy it again? I might have gotten a prettier one. Um, and certainly one with a threaded barrel. But the Mark IV series is excellent. Yeah, and I'm gonna agree with Gil here. Um, honestly, if I had to do this over again, I would think about and look and explore the Mark IV series a little bit more before I jumped off the deep end to the Valkorkson. But I would definitely get a threaded barrel. Yeah. Um, I would definitely want a Mark IV with an optic rail. Mm -hmm. um, and I really feel like they could use a trigger upgrade. Yes, they could. So I think this with a threaded barrel with an aftermarket trigger and new grips is the answer for the recipe for a really good fun handgun especially if you're going to be shooting steel challenge which if you're not shooting steel challenge or rimfire challenge look into it it's a blast yeah uh and if you're not maybe this isn't the gun for you it's really good for that however if you're just wanting a 22 uh pistol i'd, I'd go with this one all day long because i absolutely love it but this is better for a competition. And we haven't had a chance to shoot these yet, um, but maybe look at that new SIG with its higher capacity. That would be an interesting choice too. And if we have the opportunity to get our hands on one, we'll bring it to you. But that may be an interesting opportunity mm -hmm. for you if you're not going to shoot Steel Challenge or Empire Challenge, that might be a nice option. Absolutely. Well, thanks for watching us today on Tack and Track. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Artlist.io